Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video. In this video we're going to be looking at the region transfer wave update and this is, it is a bit confusing on first glance but it is a little bit more straightforward than you probably realise. I'm going to read through the introduction and then I'm going to break down a picture post. They did a nice infographic that is, makes it quite easy to see. Um, it says, there are a few changes we are planning to implement for the next round of region transfers. These changes will impact future war team matchups and sizes. Depending on the wave your region is in, you'll either have 6v6 or 8v8 in future CRWs. Please take these changes into consideration as you and your faction plan your next region transfer move. While the dates and times of the wave transfer windows are still to be decided, we thought it would be important for players to understand which regions they will be eligible to transfer to in order to better inform their transfer decision for the current round of region transfers. Now this bit's important, it does say, to be clear, the information in this post does not apply to the current region transfers. So the region transfers that are going on right now for the next week or so that are live, this information only applies to the region transfer round that will happen after the current one ends. This is what they plan to do in the future for transfers. Right now, it's as it is, wave one, wave two, wave three. And then it's gonna get broken down into like multiple groups within each wave. That's basically what this is about. The date and time for the next region transfer, which is outlined below, is to be decided. So this is the nice infographic they've created. It's got the same introduction I just read, except them you know, making you realize that it's not the current one that's going on. Now they've broken down the waves into separate groups. And we're gonna go through this. It says, once the current transfer window ends, Friday the 18th of October at 5 p.m. Pacific, we'll break down each way further in preparation for the next round of region transfers. Please check your region below since this will determine your inbound and outbound eligibility in the future. And I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna stop on each window for just a period and you can see all the people who are in wave 1A, all the people who are in wave 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A and 3B is, is quite large. So basically every single wave has been broken into two separate groups or dare I say buckets and as we scroll down a little bit it does confirm that CRW will be changing for a couple of the regions. It does say following the next round of region transfer all CRW for regions in wave 1 will have 8 versus 8. Regions in wave 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A and 3B basically means everything else will have 6 versus 6. This change is not effective immediately. Please stay tuned for more information on this in the future. Now there is a transfer timeline order because like they do right now, they have wave three regions can transfer out and then they're gonna have transfers for wave two regions and then transfers for wave one regions. Right now it can be a little bit complicated just at first glance. In the future, it's gonna be really complicated. You're gonna see it's gonna get really insane. So you're gonna have to know what group you're in. You're gonna have to understand that because there's only certain groups you can transfer to. It's, it's pretty much the same though. So it's like they've broken the groups up even more and anyone who's stuck in wave 1A, you're, you're literally screwed. You, you've got no chance of, of getting out out of wave 1a ever again you're done and a transfer timeline order says since not all waves are open at the same time please check this window timeline order to see the order in which your window opens there are six different windows only regions in the wave that have outbound transfers enabled can transfer to another region within the same wave so as you can see the first window that's going to open wave 3b regions are going to be outbound so they'll be able to transfer to wave 2a 3A and 2B, which is exactly how it is right now in terms of being able to transfer from wave three to two. You can see wave 3B is like the lowest wave, the lowest group. And once you transfer out of it, you can never transfer back to it. You can also transfer from one wave 3B region to another wave 3B region. It doesn't show that in the infographic here, but you can actually do that. Because as you see below, it says wave 3B regions are inbound and outbound enabled. Wave 2A, 2B and 3B regions are inbound enabled only. And in the second window, it does the same sort of thing, but this time for wave 3A and they can only go to 2. They can only go to wave 2, either 2B, 2A or another region within 3A. It seems complicated, like I said, it, it's pretty straightforward. It's just, it's just over the top. There's a lot going on here and it does it for every single window. The third window does it exactly the same sort of idea. 2B can go to other 2B, can go to 2A, 1B or 1A. But once you go forward, you can never come back. So if you go on one of these arrows, you can never come back to wave 2B. Same can be said for this one here. You can never come back to 2A if you go forward, but you can go to any other region within 2A. Wave 1B can only transfer to other 1B regions or to 1A. 
and once you go to 1A from 1B, you're done because as you can see, the sixth window is 1A and they can only transfer to other regions within their own wave. This is also the only wave that is going to get eight versus eight CRW in the future. Now, while this infographic is great and I, and I think the timing is good in terms of the actual region transfer it's going to affect i think it's bad for the current region transfer it's going to make things confusing this should have been announced maybe two weeks ago to give people a better idea it's being announced like the day transfers open pretty much for the current window it doesn't affect this current window that's going to confuse things straight away then when people realize it doesn't affect this window they've got to work out if their current plans are going to impact their, you know, the future possibilities. There's so much you've got to work out now, and it should have just been done before this window opened. Also, this is reminding me heavily of Tournament of Champions, where they did this thing where it's like, we're doing a new tournament, you know, Tournament of Champions, only these regions get it, and then people transferred, and then once they locked transfers up, it was like, now this is how the tournament's going to work. Now, they're not really giving any information about how the future tournaments are going to work based around these groups. They're obviously grouping regions for a reason, but they're not giving any information why. And we're just going to run into exactly the same situation that we had before, where people were transferred based on assumption. And then when we're given the actual proper information about how the future tournaments are going to work around the waves and the groups, people are just going to be annoyed exactly how they were annoyed with TO and Skopje have not learned anything from how TOC went terribly bad basically there's no literally no transparency in terms of how future tournaments are going to work around this except for how big these tournaments are going to be is wave 1a the only one that's going to have the future TOC tournaments or not is every single wave going to have its own separate TOC we need actual information like that before we can actually make an informed decision to make your transfer. Some of these are you cannot take back. Once you go to, you know, forward, you can never come back. And that can be you can never come back to people who you've played with for a long time, or you can never come back to sort of the sort of level of gameplay that you think you can probably play and you want to play. You know, Wave 1A are going to have some of the top spending factions in, I've got no doubt. You know, the, the weird thing about this, though, is... I'm in a Wave 1A faction and I'm also in a Wave 1B faction, but my Wave 1B faction was a finalist for TOC. So already it's being relegated into the second group of the waves. So it doesn't make any sense that Chambers is in Wave 1B when they were in the final of TOC. TOC should have given you the idea of what your top 16 to 32 regions were. And for whatever reason, those have changed since TOC have actually happened in the first place. Now, it could be based on region age, but region age doesn't mean anything at this point. Because the transfers have been open for so long, one of the most populated regions could legitimately be in wave three because how many people have transferred there. Obviously, Scope, you know those details. But I, I know myself, there's definitely one region in wave 1A that is smaller than at least one region in 1B because I'm in two regions and they're in the wrong places, basically. I know this myself. I know wave 1A region that I'm in is going to struggle to hit 8 versus 8 in CRW. The wave 1B region I'm in are going to be annoyed that they're in a, a 6 versus 6 region. So overall, I think that they're not giving enough information. I like the fact that they're giving it in terms of early, but it's just not enough. There's not enough information and I'm just disappointed they're not really learning from the same mistakes that they made for TOC. There is, of course, time for them to make this up because this is not affecting the current window, but the timing all around is just bad and this just doesn't feel good at the moment. But at the same time, I do appreciate the effort because they haven't gone to this sort of length in the past and the infographic does make things much easier to understand. What do you think about the region transfer update that's going to be coming? Not this window, but the following window, multiple waves, all broken down. Six versus six for the majority of the game now. Eight versus eight for only one half of one wave. We also don't know if milestones are changing for tournaments based on those six versus six regions versus the eight versus eight regions. Are rewards going to be different? We just have not been given enough information at the moment. Hopefully there's going to be a follow-up post to this to give us actual information because this doesn't really give us any information except how transfers are going to work themselves. But that is the end of my video, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have the infographic just scroll from the top to the bottom again as the outro, just so that if you obviously can't save it or if you just want to read through it easily, I don't know. I'm just going to have it on my outro. Thank you very much for tuning in, though, guys. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.